Well, some uh, figures to bring you just released from the Home Office show that more than 10,000 migrants have now arrived in the UK by small boats this year. Uh, 288 people were detected crossing the Channel yesterday. Let's bring in our political correspondent, Matthew Thompson. Um, this, of course, Matthew touches on what will be a, a key electoral issue. Um, what, what do you make of those figures? Yes, it absolutely does. I mean, this is definitely an issue that will be prominent, has already been prominent in the uh, nascent general election campaign. Look, 10,000 is a symbolic number. We've expected it for a number of days. It's finally crossed that number after five boats arrived yesterday, taking some, something like 280 or so migrants. And that takes the total number this year so far to just over 10,000. Now, if you look back at previous years, that is more than crossed the channel in the entirety of 2020. But it's still some way off the, the peak year, which was 2022, in which 45,000 or so people crossed the channel. But what is very interesting about the timing at which we've crossed this 10,000 symbolic threshold is it's a month earlier than it happened last year, and it's significantly earlier as well than in that record year of 2022. So the fear is, amongst uh, politicians, that this year may even surpass what we saw in 2022, even at a time when it's become such a political hot topic and it's uh, something that both of the main parties certainly have pledged to try and tackle. And that's where things get slightly tricky for Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, because he previously pledged that the first flights to Rwanda, this scheme that's supposedly intended to act as a deterrent to people crossing the channel, well, that those flights would get off the ground before the general election campaign. In fact, he made a bet uh, with uh, Piers Morgan about that, which he seems to have uh, lost on the face of it. Uh, and therefore, it is potentially problematic for the Prime Minister if we don't see those Rwanda flights crossing, uh, uh, taking off uh, before the election. But I think there's also possible a calculation that's taken place here that what Rishi Sunak's done so far in this campaign, perhaps one of the calculations in, in calling the election was he can now say, look, if you vote for the Conservatives, these Rwanda flights will get off the ground. And he can promise that. And it is a dividing line with the Labour Party who have said that they will scrap the Rwanda plan. So it's very possible that if the Labour Party do win this election, that no flights to Rwanda take off at all. Therefore, the question for, well, certainly the Labour Party if they enter government, but frankly, whichever party ends up in number 10, is, well, what are they going to do to tackle this? Uh, because clearly, on the figures we've had so far, it's not going away as an issue, uh, regardless of when the general election campaign starts and ends.